Theoretically, JSOW gliding bombs can be upgraded to cruise missiles which will allow strikes with a range of more than 500 kilometers, including Moscow. Oleg Katov, Ukrainian military expert, said this on the air on Radio NV. In particular, Katov reacted to the statement of the representative of the U.S. State Department, Matthew Miller, that Ukraine can strike at the territory of Russia with the weapons that it made on its own and that weapons production programs have been introduced in Ukraine over the past year. It must be understood that between the beginning of the program and the appearance of a large number of serial samples, time passes, and even in peacetime, when you are not bombed, when you have a national strategic program for the development, creation and mass production of certain weapons and military systems, this is so a bait for five to ten years, Katov said. According to him, such statements by the United States have nothing to do with the real needs of Ukraine. At the same time, he believes that the Western allies could transfer important weapons to Ukraine marked made in Ukraine so that there would be no questions to them. Why Moscow can do this, but Washington can't? Why Iran can do this, but conditional London cannot? Everyone can do that. We're not there. It's not us. They did it also. Katov added. At the same time, he drew attention to the transfer of gliding bombs to Ukraine and in particular JSOW. In my opinion, the only reason for the transfer of these rather valuable products is only one, the ability to convert them into cruise missiles. Because such a project existed, JSOW-ER. It existed from the late 2000s to 2023. It was closed a year ago. The US Navy's project, and it was closed due to the fact that they have a JSSM-ER cruise missile with a range of 900 kilometers. Therefore, the conversion of the JSOW glide bomb into a cruise missile with a range of 500 kilometers was not very interesting for them. There weren't those benefits. That is, the range of 500 kilometers for the United States in the issue of aviation weapons is not enough, Katov said. At the same time, he suggested that when converting glide bombs into cruise missiles, you can try to install the Ukrainian navigation system. Ukraine has such systems because somehow Ukrainian drones accurately hit oil refineries and the main missile and artillery directorate arsenals and airfields. Add the system. Add a self-made jet engine. We will get a cruise missile with a warhead of 450 kilograms plus a range of more than 500 kilometers. This is the distance to Moscow for you to get it. And no one will ever tell us. You can strike or you can't strike. This is a Ukrainian missile. We use it wherever we want. Katov said. Officials say the wildfire that killed at least 102 people on Maui last year erupted from an earlier brush fire that firefighters believed they had extinguished. The Maui Fire Department and the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives presented their findings on the cause Wednesday. The historic Maui town of Lahaina was destroyed in the disastrous wildfire. It has been unclear whether the blaze was a rekindling of the morning fire and whether firefighters should have left the scene after they spent hours dousing it. The officials stressed that Maui firefighters had done all they could to put out the morning fire before leaving to address other calls for service on a day when other fires were burning around the island. They deployed countless resources, spent an extensive amount of time on the scene, and observed the scene after they believed it was extinguished, Jonathan Blaze, the ATF special agent in charge of the Seattle Field Division, which includes Hawaii, told a news conference. To Lahaina and to our Maui community that our firefighters went above and beyond their due diligence to be as confident as they could be that the fire was completely extinguished before they left the scene. They remained on scene for over five and a half hours after the fire was completely contained, and for several hours after any visible signs of fire were detected. No flames, no smoke, no perceptibly glowing pieces of fuel had been observed for hours before they left. This is more than twice our average post-containment on-scene time for similarly sized fires over the last several years. We are confident in the efforts of our firefighters that day in the conditions that they faced, 
even in the conditions that they faced, that they went above what they should have gone above and beyond in normal days to protect the community as best as they can.